Hey guys, this is Nick, owner of the Bullpen Sports Grill in Ludington. Come visit us daily for lunch or dinner, or come get your party on on the weekends with live music and our house DJ. Check out our Mechanical Bull. We're the place that has it all. Check us out on Facebook, like our page, and follow all of our events. That's the Bullpen Sports Grill in Ludington. Welcome to the Barn Podcast, fellas. We are in, is it Lettington or Park Hills? Lettington. Lettington. Fish, officially Lettington. The Lettington Park Hills Creek line right there. We are at the Bullpen. Shout out to Nick, the owner of the Bullpen. He invited us to come here. We've actually been planning on doing this for a while, just covered, never came to fruition. But, man, I freaking love this place. It's a good spot, a good hangout spot. Shout out to Nick. and uh, it's, it's up and coming. They had a, I think it's been a year in here in August, so it's like I think it's going to be a good place going. You know, you hear a lot of talk, but uh, Nick works hard, and I think it'll be a good thing going for a long time. You know that voice? That's DJ. Yes, sir. We got Big Hungry here. We got What's Mr. Big on? Hungry. Is this your <laughs> first time on Mike? On uh, on on? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, at the barn. Yeah, probably. Yeah, on the yeah. barn. Because yeah. he's he's done some swerves, yeah, right? For sure. Yeah, I've yeah. hopped on the podcast with DJ a couple of times, but I think this is the first time under the barn platform. Right, right. <laughs> yep. Shout out Swerving Podcast. You can check that on everywhere. Podcast. <laughs> podcast <laughs> that one beard's hitting me hard boys oh i went hard last night i was feeling it this morning um yeah. hey who's that who's that uh what's that podcast you listen to and that who's that guy that sounds like chad i want to know if he knows him oh the nascar podcast yeah, yeah brett griffin do you know who that is no dude you sound just like yeah, that you guy. guys sound a lot alike yeah uh hungry loves that podcast the nascar podcast so he's been trying to get me into it a lot <laughs> I've uh, I've had a few people reach out and be like, "Man, your voice is sexy," mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's all guys. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like no, well, no better feeling. <laughs> and then you guys know that voice as well. We got Twan from the Vulgar Display of Podcast and many Ooh. other things. What's up, Twan? What's up? What have you guys been doing over there with that Vulgar? How's that looking? Uh, been busy with Vulgar. You know, uh, you know, it's been doing a lot of interviews, po- posting out a lot of interviews. We're gonna do a, an actual episode here tonight. We're gonna we're here for a while. And uh, we're going to do a bunch of different things. We're going to do a knuckleball prime time. Oh, yeah. Probably wellness investors. Right now, this is falling under the barn. Uh, but we're at the bullpen in Lettington, Missouri. you got to check out the bullpen. What's your favorite thing about the bullpen? Um, I would say for me, you know, being <clears throat> 25 and stuff, I like the events that they bring here. Like last night was the phone party. You know what I mean? So we came after the, the game. The Central gave that St. Jen that ass whooping. And uh, we just came in here and just hung out. And it was a good time, you know. Good different scenery. And... It's always like you never know what I like the bullpen because you never know who you're going to catch in here. You know, you catch some good friends from some, a long time ago, and you know, you always catch the right people at the right time at the bullpen. So, but I would say that I like the events they have here for sure. Yeah, they try to do some different things that I don't see other local places do. Like you said, the phone party and the bull and the they don't have the room either. It's big in here, bro. Yes, it's that's huge, here. and that comes to my favorite thing about it. I love that it's spaced out, yes. man. You got a lot of space. You know, I said because Nick, the owner, actually came on our podcast several months ago, yeah. and we loved having him. He came to our studio, uh, but one of the things I told him then is like, you know, I've really only come during the day when I bring my kids because they have pretty much a full arcade back there. So I send them, give them a whole bunch of quarters, and then Daddy's watching football mm-hmm. for <laughs> several hours. So it's like, you know, kind of. Dave and Buster's this in here. I'd be back there with the girls playing that air hockey. <laughs> and it's like, yo, you don't have to. We don't have to go all the way to, you know, which is nice. You know, it's always nice. Like we'll be up in, you know, if the, when the birds make it to the playoffs, we'll obviously go to Ballpark Village and catch a game. It's still that good vibe, but it's that vibe right here too. Really. Yeah. So I love the bullpen. Yeah. I love it. Big Shout Hungry, you've been here before, I'm sure. Yeah. You guys both kind of touched on what I was going to say. They always have something going on, and it's pretty big you know i'm a big guy so i like the i like the <laughs> space i don't like being shoulder to shoulder sure. all the time so right. i like having my space right and then um but you know shout out to uh whacking them too you know with the hall and stuff they're getting they're getting things going over there uh i think that would be a good spot for like you know host like stand-up comedians and stuff like mm-hmm. different things like that so i think what they got going over there too at the hall is a yep. great thing Park Hills just coming back, really. Yeah, we talked about that on several different podcasts. Is like there's a resurgence in Park Hills, and you love it. You know, I, I love it. I love driving down, you know, downtown Main Street. You know, when we were kids, it was always cruising. We'd go down there, and you'd either get in a fight or you'd pick up a girl, and sometimes both. Right. 
I mean, you had the movies there. I missed the movies. Yeah. I missed the movies, man. And, and I'm not saying it's like that now, but there's definitely, you know, a lot of businesses in the area that's kind of built up. I think uh, Chris Holsey is a big part of that and some other people as well. It's become more family oriented, you know what I mean? Like, like you said, you know, even like the slaughterhouse and stuff, you can go over there and like yeah. people can go hang out and send their kids down to the magic shop and different stuff like that. Go over to the ice cream, literally the ice cream shop next door, you know, kids and ice cream be hooked for it. An hour or an oh, hour, yeah. so they can go over there and hang. It's just, a, I love it, man. I love it. Yeah. Like me and Big Hungry, we were going to 102 Tap House yesterday, and we're just driving by, and then you see seven food trucks. Like, you you ain't going to the restaurant no more. You got to go to the yeah. food truck. Right. So it's just good shit like that, man. I love it. They've got the right idea, what they're building up. So, you know, years past, it's been, you know, a new business comes in. It's going to be a freaking Goodwill or some kind of thrift shop. Mm-hmm. or Mom and pop. Gas fr- station. Yeah, gas station, you know, something. But they're doing, you know, you got the ice cream shop coming in. Or it's already in. Uh, you know, the comics place has been there for a while. That's part of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, WAC has the, the, the hall now. Uh, it, it's it's moving in the right direction with the, the kinds of businesses that are coming in. And it just works out though because everyone needs like everyone wants to do something different. You know what I mean? Like we all go to the bullpen, but then you go, go right up the street to the sand trap and yeah, have yeah. Shout out to Lotus. You know, yes, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he, he does that every time. <laughs> there it is. Five of Gosh, damn. Yeah, He's struggling. Man, that first one scared me. <laughs> I did not see it coming at all. I mean, you sit that we sit. I mean, we sit around and say we don't got much to do, but I, I'm, I'm I'm consistent around here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, we can we can go into the golf talk with this. Like, I've been in Branson and like St. Louis and everywhere. Other man, like we pay fairly cheap for golf around here. I'm thankful, oh yeah. I'm thankful for that. You know. So Austin Bosler, who's co-host of the Arch City Music Podcast, he actually played Crown Point today, and he's not from this area originally. He lives in St. Louis. And he was like, what else is around here? And I'm like, man, we're actually pretty lucky with all the golf that we do have around here. Yeah. You can get a little bit of everything. So at Crown Point, you're going to get the links. It's going to be wide open. You're, if you lose a ball, it's because you can't find it in the rough. It's not yeah. going to be trees yeah. that you lose it on. You know, you got Terra de Lac where it's sort of definitely down at the valley. It's a, it's, it is tree line. Yeah, so exactly. you have to be very precise there. And just all different types of courses. You know, me and, me and Anthony are, are members out at San Francis County, San Francis Country Club. What is it? St. Francis Country Club. Yep, there you go. <laughs> yeah. St. Francis that course, Country man. Club, which we're happy as shit out there. We love it out there. And yeah, we by, are, we're lucky. We're lucky. I was driving by that, like, just yesterday. I was like, man, that course looks in great shape. Right it now. looks good right now. It looks awesome. It usually does late late August, beginning and throughout September. That place is in its best shape of the year during that time frame. At least it has been the last three years I've been out there. It's time starting to cool out, less rain and stuff. But what's your guys' probably favorite, your favorite course that we have? Hmm. Can you go to somebody else first? <laughs> I go to Big Hungry. Um, Big Hungry can start I like it off playing, as I like playing Forche Valley and Potosi a lot. Yeah. That is a cool nine hole. Yeah. That is a cool nine hole. That's Man, one I didn't that, even that, think out there. I like it a lot. That back nine, when they had it, that back nine was awesome. Yeah, that's what I hear. I never yeah. got to play it when they had yeah, it. What, it was, what, they, what they do, what just hear. close it up? Yeah, they just close it up, uh, let it overgrow, and they just stop maintaining it. I heard there was one like that at Bontier, too, like another uh, small small nine hole that they just let overgrow. I don't know. Maybe. Lead belt. Mine would be St. Jen, though. I got to go St. Jen. I like it. Love it. St. Jen's a cool course. I always say that it's pretty tough. The greens are so small. Oh, you gotta you gotta really be have your short game on, mm-hmm. or, or your you know middle middle iron in on. But you're gonna use every club. Yeah. You're oh gonna yeah. Use every club out there. Yeah. For sure. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna be really lame and say the country club. That's what I. That's I love you it. Know. Yeah. That back nine's all. They got the best back nine, I think. One of the best back nines. I, I love that. Uh, so it's not a hard. It's not a hard course. You can shoot fairly well. You know, we're, I'm not a good golfer. I'm a 95 golfer probably. But I can have my days where I shoot under. Mm-hmm. You shoot in the 80s. You know, it's an easier course, but I, I'm with you, man. Like, I didn't want to be the hometown <laughs> homer. but And maybe it's just because I play it there so much. But I think, you know, it's a pretty easy course. But it has holes that are that have character to them. It's not boring. It's not, you know. So, so you guys are members, like. It, it really probably does add up being a member than just going oh, to pay for big, golf. big time. Well, the, yeah, I mean, it's got its benefits, right? So it's a private course. So yes. that is the selling point for me. I don't have to book a tee time. I don't have to worry about going and making sure that, you know, the, the clubhouse is open or anything like that. Basically, if I can see, I can go out and fucking play. Right. That's mm-hmm. cool. And no one has to be. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I, and that's the same for me. I mean, it's, you know, a quarter mile from my house or maybe even less than that. But the appeal to me is the it's it's the only private member 
course in the area. It's the only private course in the area. Mm-hmm. And I don't like I don't like being backed up and backed up. You know, if we show up there and there's a bunch of, you know, this happened recently. There's a bunch of people on one getting ready to go off. We'll just hop on. We'll find a hole that's empty and just oh, hop four, on yeah. and go. Yeah. yeah, lots of people out there just jump around. Yeah. yeah, I think I'm gonna be a member out there, man. Like, I think it just adds up if you're gonna, yeah. if you're really a golfer. I think it just it, adds up. To yeah, it, it it adds up. I mean, you you could probably only play like three times, and mm-hmm. it's worth your it's worth your monthly fee. So I, I played, played the monthly fee was what only like seventy bucks or something. Like, so I think it, the it, first it, year, yeah, the first year yeah. is, is around that. Then it goes up. That ain't bad third at year, all. Though. Third year's around hundred bucks. That ain't bad a month. I'm in on that. But yeah, it's yeah, but but if you play enough, it's definitely worth it. Um, and they have a cool cart membership thing too. Where, you know, some of these places, you have to have your own cart. And then you have to upkeep on the batteries. Or if you got a gas, you know, you always have to deal with that. Where, like, you rent a cart from there, but it's one price for the whole year. Oh, that's cool. So it's their cart, but you still have ownership to it when you show up. You just pay it month to month? Nope. You pay it one, uh, one, one lump sum at the beginning of January, and then you're good for the year. Oh, yeah. That's that. worth it. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, you go most of these courses, bro, and, like, how much you pay for the, like, you pay for the cart instead of golf. Yeah, it's, you do. It's ridiculous. Uh, actually, years and years ago, Chad and I had a membership out at uh, Terre d'Alac. And um, our membership only covered the green fees. So every time we went out to play, I was like, hey, your your green fees are free, but you got to pay still another 8 bucks for your cart. Yeah. Every, no. every time we played. So it's still, like, added up. Yeah, it does you know? add up, bro. Like, they want, like, they want to charge. Like, golf should be, like, I think a true 18, like, down in this. From here to at least fast, it should be about 20 you know, 20, anywhere to 28, 30 bucks is solid. But then you're paying like 45, you're paying like 45 bucks just for the cart. It's yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. You guys been uh, watching the President's Cup any? Yes. We, I, I've, I've been watching highlights. Uh, I watched the last clips a little bit. I'm mad. I'm a little mad because I didn't tee in because uh, I love live betting the holes. Like, you can live bet holes and stuff. Yeah. And you're going to win and tie. And that stuff's like... It's really cool to bet and stuff. So, uh, but not seeing highlights and Homa. I think Homa's he's, he's been he's been golfing good, and I love seeing him golf well. But uh, man, we're just kicking ass like the Ryder Cup. I haven't seen it in the last hour or so, but we were we were up. Last time I saw it, we were up. So um, I was going to ask you guys that: Do they interchange the Ryder Cup and Presidents like every year or something? No. This, so this time last year was the Ryder Cup. Right. So it's every two years. Yeah. I th- I think it's like every, the President's Cup's every two years. Two years and, the and riders, riders every two years. Yeah, I want to say so. It's like every, it's kind of like he said. I think they do interchange. I could be wrong. So we won't yeah, have a Riders so, this year. No, no, it'll be next year. No, but there won't be a President's and Cup it, next year. And it's in uh, international Riders Cup. Yeah, yeah, it's in like France or something. I, I haven't seen where they announced it yet. I think it's in somewhere over there. That's what, that's that what that got, sounds familiar. Yeah. That's what got me into golf, though, the camaraderie and the, the yeah. Ryder Cup. So it's cool. You can't beat that. No, you can't. Yeah, like, we're, we're, we're dominant, man. Like, you got to appreciate how good the guys are. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's cool seeing how, like, they battle within each other all year. And then they can just collectively get together and do that. And, like, it's just respect of, you know, what game they have, really. Yeah, before this last Ryder's Cup last year, though, we hadn't won in a while. Yeah. America was, I was struggling. Say, well, yeah. they said that 2019 we won with Tiger. And they said that was probably the last. Did we win that year? We, I was talking about Riders Cup. Pre- oh, yeah. Presidents Cup is we've won. Yeah, we've been whooping that ass. Yeah. Riders Cup. Yeah, I feel like that's harder. That's a harder camaraderie. It's just you know team golf's cool. Yeah. You know you yeah. don't you don't get that a lot. You get the you get it's 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 a solo sport or it's an individual sport for the most part. So anytime there's that team element, you see the guys fist bumping and getting all excited for each other. They, I, I they think cut that's loose. Cool. It's it's great yeah. vibe. So all right, a question for you guys. So. Cam Smith and say like, you know, Joaquin don't go to live. You think that they're a little bit closer in the points? I don't think so. A little bit closer in the points. And the, like, so say if Cam Cam Smith don't go to live golf and Joaquin Neiman, like the top, some of the top international players that they really need for the the president's. Oh, that's huge. You think they? You think they're a few points closer? Well, well, yeah, like Cam Smith should be on that team. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, he's, <laughs> like dude, he's one of the he's the top three in the that's world. Australian. Joaquin Neiman too, like he was, yeah. he's been top twenty in tournaments like the last four to five, yeah. last four to five in. So I think like Live Golf hurt the international team a lot. Oh yeah. So let's let's talk about it. Live or is it Live? Yeah. I, I don't think even Live. I think live it's Golf. Live, yeah. yeah. What, what are you guys' thoughts on Live Golf? Get John Daly in there. I agree. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> pay the Christ. Man. Pay the man. <laughs> pay the man. Get hey, him in man. there. Complete the party vibe. So are they contemplating? Are they are they offering them? I think they did offer him. 
oh, before. I think so, yeah, and I don't think he, he went for it. So I follow John da Daly's daughter on Instagram, and I think he just had some type of surgery this week. So uh, I don't know if he's getting ready or something. So yeah. I don't know if he needed that. But uh, I'm not mad at Live Golf. I like the team aspect of things. Like you said, it's cool to see uh, – in the same team, like week to week to week to week, I think that gives like that's a different that's a different vibe, you know. Yeah. Like Dustin Johnson team, they won four in a row, so you know, like it's to talk within the locker room and stuff. Like what I think about the live is they've tapped into something that the PGA has been missing forever, which is like a little bit of looseness. Like don't make the dudes wear pants in the middle yeah. of July, exactly oh, yeah. when it's a hundred degrees. Mm -hmm. Like they could, like you know, like loosen up a little bit. Exactly. I, you know, I love the history of sports. That's one of the cool things about sports is, like, taking into account all the history to it. So I understand that there, it's a gentleman's game and you're supposed to do all that. Mm -hmm. But fucking come on. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's be a little right. bit real like, let's, here. Let's, let's keep some tournaments, you know, classics, right? The Masters. Right. You don't want to see yeah. – you want to see the Masters as it is right. today, right? But, man, how much fun is it watching the waste management? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Absolutely. Geez. And that's the future of golf. Exactly. Like, it's all going that way. Yeah. Because golf, you know – before Tiger, golf wasn't cool. You know, if a golfer walked in here before Tiger, you're like, look at that geek. <laughs> <laughs> he should play a real sport like football or basketball or baseball or something. Yeah, and that's what, you know. But Tiger, Tiger made it cool. So, like, let's make this shit cool. Let's mm -hmm. make it all, all like the waste management. Now, I agree, like, the Masters is different. U.S. Yep. Open, different. It's something yep. different. But, yeah, waste management, I'm, God. Give that, it to me. Yes, Straight. exactly. I, I feel like Liv shook up the PGA, though. Like, they know they got to get off their ass, though. Like, um, so they announced the FedEx Cup, like, so people don't have to pay. Like, if you uh, if you make the cut, you don't have to. Well, I think even if you get cut or anything, you don't have to pay for, like, hotel fees and all that stuff now that, yeah. you know, like, young guys really get banking off of, like, you know, can I make this flight or stuff like that. So yeah. the PGA has that money to, you know, hand up and, you know, take care of them guys. So. I think Liv Golf is just shaking them up to it. Like, hey, what are you guys going to do to keep the guys over there? Yeah, I think we lost Liv's a lot of guys. Good for the PGA in that sense. It's going to make, if they want to keep their players there, they're going to improve their organization. They've yeah. increased purses, like he said, you know, reimbursing players and things like that. That's yeah. going to go a long way for the PGA as I, a whole. I don't blame the players. I know greed gets brought up. Greed gets brought up a lot. You know, these guys are multi, multi, multi millionaires. Mm -hmm. They're like, how greedy are you going to be? Money's still money, man. You know, like LeBron still does commercials, right? LeBron's kids, 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 kids won't ever have to worry about money. Right. But money's still money. If you're going to make money, make that money. Make it all. I don't blame anybody for making that money. I'm going to take I, that 700 mil. I, I think the majority of the everything bad associated, I mean, is the political part of it. Oh, every time. You know, the, the right. Saudi-backed league and the money comes into play because the PGA just gets pissed. You know, they want right. to start nitpicking everything. Yeah. You know, hey, those guys aren't wearing shorts. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and I don't I don't know much about the Saudi. I don't know what's going on right. over there, right? I know there's a lot of bad shit that happens yeah. over there. But why are we holding them to an ethical standard that we're not even holding like our U.S. government? Because exactly. Because our government tr makes trades and does deals and have all these things with, with uh, countries that are just as unethical and doing just as bad shit. So, like, why are we holding golfers' ethical standards different than what yep. we do our own government? Like, exactly. why are they the ones that we, okay, you guys, you guys got to make the choice of not not doing it. Right? I, I love how, you know, oh, we shouldn't be sending our money to this at this country. We shouldn't be helping them with, with finances and all this stuff. And then when our own country does help us during the pandemic, what are we doing? This isn't free money. Yeah. What the fuck? You can't make anybody happy. And then Brett Favre's taking some of it, too. So. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Like that. Just yeah. crazy. I mean, yeah, money's money, man. It's like, and that's, I think that's why T Tiger didn't take it. You know, Tiger's rich forever. He don't need 700 mil and then go join Live Golf. I think, though, I think the PGA will hand it down to Tiger at some point, honestly. And it might get better from that point. I say five years. I think Tiger's so far along in his career that he doesn't need to make a big change like that like he's just going to ride out the rest of whatever yep. you know i think if it was young tiger it might be different yeah but uh i think he's just so close to you know being on a champions tour because how old is he 40 he's he's not that far away from the champions tour if phil just made the champions tour you know and i know he'll still play in events or whatever but i just can't wait to see him at the ascension tour in st louis what yeah no that? kidding what is that uh it was actually a couple weeks ago bro yeah so that's where me and me and Tuan actually met John Daly, and uh, I always say John Daly is exactly who you think John Daly is. 
like when you meet him, rolled up. His tea time was like, you know, within, eight, eight within minutes. Yeah. And we're looking around like, where's, because we wanted to see him, you know, practice <laughs> or on the range or something. Practice. It's eight o'clock and it's like 750. And we're like, where's he at, dude? It's crazy. He <laughs> comes flying up on a golf cart. And everybody else is walking, by the way. He comes flying up on a golf cart, smoking. He had a Coke. Mm hmm. Had a McDonald's something. <laughs> Mc, uh, yep. Um, breakfast sandwich yep. from McDonald's. Yep. Walks. I mean, pulls right up to the p practice putting green, like four feet from the green, <laughs> practice green, like hits a couple, maybe 10 putts or one, so. One handed while he's smoking and talking. He's just like, yeah, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> then, then we're like, we're still looking at the clock because they're pretty particular about when guys go off, right? Because they have them back to back to back. So we're like, the, the tee box is like a good ways away and we're still here. It's like 758 now. We're like, oh, he ain't going to make it. He hops in that fucking cart and takes off again, man. The best thing I saw, I think it was the first hole. He first he drills it. I mean, he it fucking monster shots. Murders every, the ball still. Every shot just fucking murders it. Mm -hmm. We get up, we start walking around to the first green he goes off of, and he comes screeching up. He drives on the fucking green, <laughs> going around it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I guess we don't give a fuck here. You don't care. It's John Daly. What hey, what turn would you go to? Huh? Didn't, didn't you go to a golf tournament? Oh, I went to the PGA Championship in what? Were you there? Yeah, six, yeah. So what year was that? 2016? Eight. Eight. Oh, it was eight. No. Might 17. Be I have the flag in my place. Been, had to, yeah, it had to have been an even here, but. I seen, uh, man, I seen videos though, and I, I go back and look at videos, and I seen like two of my buddies I knew, and Tiger's hitting that that shot out the uh, out the trees. I forgot what hole that was, but. Oh yeah. The presidents comes here in 26, so. I think that'd be that'd be cool to see. Did you go during a competition round or a practice round? Or I d I didn't go on a comp uh, practice round. I went on Sunday. Oh, sh okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's like, a good day to go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, were, we were in that crowd that was walking up. Yeah, 18, 18 that was a lot of away. people, man. God, that's was, such a cool video. Yeah, I was in there somewhere. Yeah, with all them people. Yeah, walking up 18s when Tiger was making that final push. So, me and my buddy Chuck went to the went to the practice round on Tuesday. Yeah, that was the first time I got to see Tiger. And then I saw him not too long ago in Tulsa where I was, I was about from me to DJ to him. And, dude, it's just like being in the presence of somebody that's that great at what they do and what they've done is just a different feeling altogether. You know, it's like being in the same room as Michael Jordan. Oh, it's sure. like a godly figure, you know. Yeah, I always thought that, too. Like, if I seen a LeBron or something in the room, like, I would – it would literally take me a second to say something. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know what I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like through music what do you and stuff. Say, what like do you even, say? Thank you, you know, like for being so. Hey, like, yeah, like, <laughs> hey, dude, I like what you do. Yeah, <laughs> you know, me and Twan back in the day, it was sort of one of our things that we we were really, really into metal music. So we wanted to meet all these guys and kind of, you know, just hung out on some buses and stuff. And uh, so, like through all that, I sort of became like desensitized to that sort of starstruck thing, you know, just because you got used to hanging around and meeting, you know, all these people and. Uh, but when somebody real famous or somebody that you're really a fan of enters the room, I always get that like, yeah. like oh, like Howard Stern, you know, is we're on the radio now or podcasting now. Howard Stern's a huge influence on me. Listened to him for years and years and years, and I met him one time, and uh, it was sort of by surprise, and I was literally my body was shocked, and I was like <laughs> frozen. I didn't know what to do. I don't think he froze. I think his body was in shock, but he fucking reacted immediately. He darted <laughs> right towards him with a fucking ink pen in his hand. <laughs> yeah. I think you were the only person who actually got there to him and had him sign something before yeah. Ronnie and everybody shoot everybody away. So he was, you know, uh, America's Got Talent, that oh, yeah, TV yeah, show. Yeah. So he was a judge on there for a couple years, and they That's did it. I know him from. They did a taping in St. Louis, and like I said, I've been a huge fan, and uh, it's at the Fox Theater. Oh, have that's been cool. To, have been to the Fox? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super. I Batman there. It was lit. Yeah. Batman, uh, Dark Knight. I, was, I seen it there when I was young. Yeah, so it's a super cool venue. And he comes, like, walking down the stairs like an angel or, like, something. And uh, Twan or somebody was like, hey, there's Howard Stern. Uh, like, <laughs> and it was before, like, anybody anybody else seen him, like, whoever it was they, saw they him. They really just opened the doors up really? to let people in. That's crazy. And, and I'm never going to take – I mean, I, I will freeze for a second, but I'm never going to take that – I'm never gonna miss that opportunity. Like I seen him, I'm like I'm going. Yeah, that's how it was when I met Russell Wilson, man. Like, I I, I didn't really say much. Like, I was like, Russell, can I get a picture? He was like, yeah. And I and I got up to him. And I just 
I just couldn't even say nothing. I just literally dapped him up. Like, <laughs> yeah. tapped his chest. I was like, let's go get Super Bowl, baby. I was like, got a picture. <laughs> then, That's got cool, out man. Of there. It was a cool moment, though. Cool moment. Big Hungry, you ever met any super famous people? I was just thinking about that, and not really. I mean, sports, I mean, movies, music. Not one person? Not that I can think of. Never really met anybody that famous. Or you, like, been somewhere, and they walked in, and you didn't get to see them, maybe? Uh, there was a, I was on the pawn shop, and... I can't think of her name. Was you know who Delilah is? You ever heard of her? Delilah. Yeah, she hosts some oh, radio oh, show. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I work at a pawn shop and she came in, so I guess that counts. She's <laughs> all right. You know, I thought she was just like spewing me some nonsense about what she did, and like yeah. I looked her up and I was like, oh, she's like the eighth most listened to person yeah. on the radio. I was yeah, like, wow. She, she hosts like a, or she used to anyway, like host yeah. a nighttime show where people would call in and then they would request songs. Yeah, I know who you're yeah, talking about. Somebody I, recognized her voice while she was there, and they were like, oh, uh, they, they were they freaked out. So <laughs> I guess great. I guess she had some. More importance than I realized, but yeah, she like recorded a message for her sister. It was oh, pretty cool. cool. But cool. have you have yeah. you got have you guys ever met uh, anybody famous that you didn't really care about? God, that's a good that's a great question. Um, because I got a story about mine. Um, oh yeah, John Wall, complete dickhead. Who really? John Wall, he was a dick. Yeah, yeah, I didn't like him. <laughs> didn't like him. I, you know, I was like eighteen. You know, that first time going to see the. You know, the uh, Isaiah Thomas, he hosts the basketball tournament. That's where I met Russell Wilson, too. He brings all these athletes. You think they're nice people. John Wall's literally sitting there by himself. Like, no one's around him. So I'm like, I'm going to go get a picture. Like, hey, John. I was like, hey, John, you mind if I get a picture? He was like, make it quick. I'm just like, <laughs> damn. Like, you know, I still took the picture, but it didn't even feel good after, you know. Yeah. Just like, that guy's a dickhead. Who was yours, Twan? So um, I used to travel a whole lot. And uh, I've met, actually, quite a few several people at um, LAX. Um, I met uh, Jane's Addiction there. Uh, David Navarro was the biggest dickhead I've ever met in my life. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, God, I hate him. Like, he, he kind of did the ever last thing, but he just he just blatantly didn't even say anything. He walked by you like you didn't even exist. Yeah, that's yeah. not cool. Not cool, right? At least you don't got time. The other, guy, the other two guys were, like, signing shit for everybody. You know, by the time... I was actually on a flight home with Jane's Addiction. That's on cool. my flight. So they were playing in St. Louis the next night, and they were on the same flight. Oh, but um, another time I went there, you remember that song, uh, Sexy and I Know It? Mm-hmm. Sexy and I Know uh, It. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So those guys, it was like 5 a.m. at LAX, and they're in the same security line as me. And at the time, my stepson loved that song. And I stop him. I go, hey, hey, guys, do you mind if I get your picture? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. ma'am, do you mind? Oh, no, no, I don't want in it. <laughs> <laughs> not 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 for me. <laughs> <laughs> what was their name? L M F A O. Yeah, I think. Yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. Um, uh, wiggle 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 wiggle. Yeah. Wiggle. yeah. So yeah. the dude just kind of awkwardly stood back so I could take his picture from my stepson and send it to him. I was like, I don't I don't I don't know you. Yeah, that's why I don't care about it. Yeah. yeah. He don't give a shit. That's so funny. I tell you who was really cool. Not super into him now, but at the time I was was uh, Kid Rock. Twan, you were there, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, Kid Rock was super cool. Pounds cool. of weed on his like under his jacket, <laughs> like yeah, like was really cool. And he's bumming smokes. Like, dude, you're Kid Rock. Like, why are you yeah. bumming smokes? That's funny. Uh, he signed a five dollar <laughs> bill for me, and then like when he started getting real popular, and some of his songs weren't that great anymore. I actually went to the Lowe's at the time at a Seven Eleven, and I actually tried to used the five dollar bill once and they wouldn't take it. Oh damn! <laughs> damn. And I was damn. like, "Fuck!" Kid Rock owes me five bucks now. <laughs> we, five uh, bucks. we kind of met him and them at Warp Tour, right? Uh, Ice T. I, I remember walking by Ice T and brushed him. Would you consider Warp Tour like metal? Uh, mm-hmm. So punk. metal, it's more punk. You know, punk's like fat, a little bit more faster. Uh, but definitely metal has little. A lot of metal acts have played on Warp yeah. Tour for sure. They come to St. Louis every year, right? Uh, not Warped anymore. Warped Tour is not Warped, a thing anymore. Yeah, Warped Tour is not a thing. Damn, what's that? Something still comes up that's like kind of there, know, metal-y. There, are, there really aren't any metal tours right now that go through like a festival, traveling festival tour Damn. like that anymore. So when that when that end? It had to be like 2019 or COVID time. Mm, Prob- it, was, it was actually before that. Um, the last one that was in existence was one called Mayhem Festival. And then, I mean, they just basically... they. They got all these big acts before, and then they just start. They stopped getting these acts, and they had to start getting repeat headliners and stuff. So the sales went down. They finally said, "Fuck, let's get King Diamond and Slayer on this last one and call it quits." <laughs> hey, this is a good question. I was just listening to a podcast the other day, and I want to ask you guys: If you had to have one song that you chose that was on the soundtrack of your life, what would it be? 
one song? Yeah, but you just had to, like, you wanted it to be on there. Like, there's probably thousands of songs, but you had to have one that was going to be on there. Oh, man. I'd say probably Free Fallen. That's a good one. I like that one. Because Free Fallen's just, I've always loved that song, always loved Tom Petty. And it seems like throughout my life that song has come up in different times. I would so, say, uh, like, like if I'm ri- in my movie, if I'm like riding off into the sunset, it's probably free falling. That's what's up. I feel that. Mine probably be Time Passages, Al Stewart. That's just my jam. What is it? Time Passages, Al Stewart. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a good one. Got them time Passages. <laughs> Dude, yours is Danger Zone. Danger Zone, too. That is a good one. <laughs> it's gotta be, right? That is a good one. And I'm still hooked on that. I'm still hooked on that Top Gun, man. Yeah. I'm hooked on it. It's a good movie. Yeah. We, we might do a little Third Eye later, maybe. Yeah, I got to. Yeah, I haven't done it in a minute. I've, uh, I want to talk about that Dahmer a little bit. Have you guys? Tell us I haven't that? watched it yet. I've watched one and a half, yeah. e- one and a half episodes. It's crazy. Don't so, spoil it. Oh, yeah. nothing. I don't got nothing to say. I'm, I'm only episode four. I, I don't so, yeah. know how the story ends. Yeah, I don't either. Like, I was talking to Jared about it. <laughs> it's not good. It's, it's like the Titanic. <laughs> how, how does it end? The spoiler is actually in episode one. Yeah, they, you they, know what they I mean? kind of like hurried it all up. Working backwards yeah. kind of thing. But that, and that's like, I was telling Jared, I, I like it because, like, you know, as a, as a kid or, you know, going through school, whatever, you heard that name, but I was never like, oh my, you know, oh my. The, the, Google wasn't a thing like it was today, like, oh, let me go Google this guy like that. So I was never really doing that and yeah. picked up on who he was. So it's cool to go in with, like, knowing little about yeah. it. So I, it's a good case. I like it. I so like it. I got super interested in that. I've been, always been super interested in, like, true crime stuff just because, of, like, the psychological element to it, because I'm super into psychology obviously uh so i actually wrote my senior thesis on it's called motivations of madmen is what i titled it but on serial killers and how they sort of designate what's a serial killer what's a mass murderer you know because like somebody goes into a shopping mall and shoots a bunch of people that's not a serial killer it's a mass murderer right yeah and so that's very different of what the psychological element to somebody like that and somebody like Dahmer, where Dahmer it's like the power over people is really the turn on, and that and he's a no whole another crazy yeah. son of a bitch. Is that kind of like uh, music genres? We're just fucking splitting hairs here. They're killers, right? <laughs> yeah, they're not good people. Yeah, <laughs> they're not that great of people. Not not people you want to hang with. That is crazy how you put that though. Like it makes you think, you know, like the the mindset. You know, it's all crazy, but damn, it is like you yeah. Know. Then there's you know, I mean, there's always all these FBI profiles on a lot of. Serial killers have a lot of traits in common, like homosexuality, like hidden homosexuality is a lot of it where uh, a lot of their victims are sometimes boys or men or whatever, you know, like John Wayne Gacy and all that. But uh, a lot of times it's just having that they, they feel completely powerless over their lives and everything else because they've been treated bad with trauma or whatever. So they want to have that power over somebody else. The only thing I would say, like, I don't. Like Dahmer said, he was born like that, and he, he didn't. He don't think that anything happened that affected him to doing that. What's up, Chuck? And um, you know, I just I feel like you can just change in life. But he might have just been that ill. You know, he might have just yeah. been that ill to where he couldn't. And uh, it's just different. It's just different. Dude, it's crazy, man. If you get into all those, it's crazy. I tell you, have you seen a uh, Mind Hunter on Netflix? Uh, yeah, it's, it's I was just about to ask you about that. that Dude, good? so oh, good. Yeah. Well, so you're into good. that one. What it was? Oh yeah. So I might, good. I'm about to watch that. You'd love that. It's based on a true story. A guy who was it was an FBI profiler, and uh, uh, Unabomber's another one on Netflix. Really good. The Unabomber. I feel like I've seen that. There's a couple Unabombers on Netflix that are really good. Are you guys like more? Would you say nowadays you're more of a doc, uh, uh, documentary guy or a movie guy? I'm more of a movie guy. I like series. Yeah, depends, series? depends on what I'm doing. I mean, them docs are being. I like. I like to give me some information, like you know, just yeah. true knowledge and just real quick. Like I've been watching a lot of docs lately, so yeah. that, one, that one about that ref and him betting is is crazy. Yeah. He he said uh, he tried claiming this man tried claiming that he only made thirty five thousand dollars betting one hundred and fifteen NBA games, and then that they like that was like forty five minutes of the episode, and then they asked him at the end of the episode again, like an outcut, and I don't think that they. They knew they were setting them up. He said, "So you only you only claim that you made thirty five thousand dollars while gambling." He said, "Is that a true statement?" He's like, "I guess we won't know." And then, bro, there's no way he got way more than that. Oh yeah, he only lost. He betted 115 times and lost, I think, 35, 35 bets. Twan, do you remember that old one called The Jinx from HBO? 
It, I, it she, doesn't, I, doesn't, doesn't sound familiar. Man, I don't want to ruin it for you, but it's one of my favorite documentaries. HBO? Ever. Yeah. It's, I watch I got HBO. I'll watch it. Okay. Right. Go, watch the Jinx. Jinx with an X? Yes. All right. I got to want to go to commercial break. I got some cool announcements. Uh, Knuckleball will have the Coach Wise interview. Uh, we'll do that on Tuesday, so I think that'll be a good interview. I'm going to start trying to get the coaches' interviews going. You know, football coaches dive into all the different towns, and with basketball coming up, have the coaches on. And, um, you know, third eyes coming up. And then we got anything exciting coming from the barn before December? Bunch of stuff. Bunch of stuff? What you got? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> all of it. We got a live radio show coming up. Oh, yeah, you did say that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we got a huge interview. Kevin Nealon. You know Kevin Nealon? Back in Saturday Night Live, was in all those yeah. uh, Adam Sandler movies. Who, who knew he was a St. Louis guy? Did not know that. <laughs> so was he, is he coming here to do stand-up? Yeah. So we're getting in the stand-up world, which I've been wanting to get into for a while. So hopefully that's the one that uh, gets us where we need to go. But we're live at the at the bull. We're live at the barn. We're going to be here for a minute. We're just kicking. Um, yeah, man. I just I'm glad we've been doing this, man. The barn. It's just been a good thing, and uh, I see great things coming. Like I was looking at just the downloads of like all of us combined, bro. That shit is kicking off. <laughs> yeah. It ain't no joke, bro. It's not really. So just you know, shout out to all the, the people that are downloading. Listening to different episodes and stuff, uh, you know. Shout out Micah that's out there working with the Birds and Swords. Uh, you guys on the, you guys on the Vulgar for real. Like that shit blew up quick. Like that, that, you know, that's cool. And I, I spread it everywhere I go. Like people, people are always talking like metal and stuff. Like someone at the bar last night at Slaughterhouse, and, I, and I'm like, hey, you guys, you probably like my guys, my guys podcast. Yeah. I'm like, that ain't me, but that's all they talk about. So I think we all got our different niche, and we'll just keep doing it, and it's growing. Yep. And we appreciate all the listeners out there. What's your favorite, th- what's your favorite thing about the bar and hunger? That smoke up in there. Yeah. <laughs> no, I Tony mean, smelled wonderful when he sat down. <laughs> Big. No, I mean, just. I mean, I love talking. I mean, I didn't done, done, done a whole lot of talking tonight, but I mean, I love talking and just being able just to talk, you know, sure. over different topics and all that. Like that's just cool, you know. Love podcasts and stuff like that. I always said, you know, I wanted to do it, and you know, it's cool to see people that are actually doing it. Yeah, I've always said that this is the shit we do anyway. We would sit around and be like. No, Tiger Woods is this. Yeah. No, fuck this. <laughs> we would do this shit anyway. Might as well try to do something with it. And maybe maybe some other people will hear it. But uh, we're live at the bullpen. We want to shout out Nick and the staff here. Make sure if you come here, you tip your waitresses. Yes. You don't back out on those bills. Don't be one of those dudes. Don't. And uh, you come support the, the bullpen. We are live in the building. And uh, we're going to have a good time tonight, fellas. Uh, and we'll talk to you soon. We're going to check in with some other podcasts here in a bit. Yes, sir. Fellas, thanks. Hey guys, this is Nick, owner of the Bullpen Sports Grill in Lettington. Come visit us daily for lunch or dinner, or come get your party on on the weekends with live music and our house DJ. Check out our Mechanical Bull. We're the place that has it all. Check us out on Facebook, like our page, and follow all of our events. That's the Bullpen Sports Grill in Lettington.